So turn in your Bibles to Matthew 19, and we're going to read a couple of verses. We read this verse last week from Genesis, or two weeks ago from Genesis. This is the Jesus version, the Jesus version, Matthew 19, verses 4 through 6. And here's what it said. Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. Now this is the part where Jesus adds in some of his thoughts. So they are no longer two, but one, one flesh. And then I love what he says right here. Therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. That word join, joined in the original language literally means to be, to be glued together mm-hmm. for future purposes. There's like, a, there's like a future, there's like a purpose mm-hmm. in the word. God brings them together for something, for something powerful. And so uh, we're going to talk about this, bounce off of this passage and talk a little bit about conflict, conflict. this weekend. Yikes fighting right. But um, back to that Matthew verse, and uh, we talked about it like John said a couple weeks ago, but the three key phrases in there are, we'll leave, be united, and become one. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the process of marriage. And we talked about the fact that marriage is a process. So the becoming one really is the process, because you say, I do at the altar, but then it's a life long journey of discovering one another yep. and actually of melding, you know, two lives together. And um, like you said, we're going to talk about conflict a little bit, which um, is a, a heated subject. It's a real subject. Um, and we want to talk about some thoughts about how to fight right, right? Because we all are going to bump up against conflict in our life and we mm-hmm. want to be able to do it right and put a purpose to it instead of just fighting for fighting's sake. And when Jesus said, what God has joined together, let no one separate. That gives us a little glimpse on what, what we're, what, how we need to fight. So we need to fight for the joining, right? We're going to fight in a positive way to make the joining work. And we're going to fight against the separating because the separating uh, or conflict that separates is what builds wedges into our relationships. And that's what we don't want to have. We want to build strong relationships that come together, not yep. relationships that tear down our or separate us, right. you know. Um, and, you know, like I said, conflict is inevitable. Unless you're in a room by yourself, <laughs> you are going to have conflict. You're going to bump up against it. So this message is not just for married people, although we're talking to the married couples out there today. But um, if any relationship in life, you can apply these principles in how to deal with conflict. So everybody have your, you know, listening ears on and, you know, in no way can we cover everything, but our hope is that we can maybe spur you on to some good conversations um, and so that you can improve in how you deal with conflict conflict in your relationship. And I know for us, being married nearly 28 years, we've had lots of opportunity for conflict. Maybe we should go in the boxing ring. No, No, I'm teasing. We're not going to do that. Somebody asked me between services, are you going to do the boxing thing? I said, not a chance. (laughs) No way I'm going to get in there. So lots of opportunities for conflict. And um, fortunately, by the grace of God, uh, I don't like conflict, but I can honestly say it's during those seasons and us learning how to work things out in our relationship, it's, that's what's actually built a strong uh, relationship one with another, sure. a strong marriage, a strong yep. friendship, a strong understanding of one another, is learning how to deal with the seasons of conflict or moments of conflict and come out on the other side. So that's what we hope to talk so about it's, today. It's, I would say conflict is not only normal, but it's, it, you could almost say it's necessary for a personal relationship to grow. It gives us the opportunity to grow yep. forward and to to overcome, and I just want to kind of throw out this one thought. This seems real obvious, but just stop and think where you are in your marriage. Conflict is heightened when we're in a season of change or transition. So when we first get married, you start a new job, mm-hmm. maybe the, you're empty nesters for the first time, maybe you've retired, maybe you've moved to another city, yeah. whatever the case is, when there's change, conflict is going to kind of go to another mm-hmm. level, or, or we're going to face new things, and we're going to have more opportunity for for conflict. I love this verse in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3 and I kind of think it kind of spells out one of the myths of of healthy relationships. He says make every effort, this is Mm -hmm. the Apostle Paul, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. So 
Sometimes we think, you know, when we're in love with someone or we have a strong, healthy relationship, there shouldn't be conflict. And, and you know, we're always on the same page. But Paul says, you, you got to make every effort to stay there right. or to keep yourself in a place of, of unity. And so the goal is unity. The goal is agreement. Because the Bible teaches that when two people are agreed or when two people are on the same page, when there's unity, there's just, it's, mm -hmm. they're unstoppable. There's, there's uh, every possibility. And so to, to be on the same page, to stay in a place of unity is the goal. And here's the big, maybe the big picture thought for the message. If you want to jot this down, conflict is not the absence of unity. It's the opportunity for unity. Mm -hmm. It's not the absence of unity. It's the opportunity for, for unity. It's all about getting on the same page page. And so here's what we're going to do for the message. Three, three points, three questions really mm -hmm. we're going to use as an outline for the message. And here's the first one. The first one is to think a little bit about yourself and ask yourself, how do I respond? When conflict comes, what's mm -hmm. my response? How do I respond? Yeah. And which like we said, everybody faces conflict. So the goal is not to get stuck there, but yep. to be able to respond in the right way so you go through it. You know, you come out on the other side. Um, working toward a place of health, again, not perfection. There is going to be conflict. There is going to be issues, but we can respond in a healthy way. And because we're all human, um, I'll speak for myself, I don't always respond in the most healthy way when I feel um, when there's a rub or there's an issue that we're, we're looking sure. at together. Um, my sinful nature sometimes speaks up first, not my sweet spiritual nature. I don't know about you, it might just be me, but you know, when we're pressed, sometimes the worst comes out of us instead of the best. But we want to work on that, and I think we, we can work on that, which is awesome. So I think um, I want you to think about that as well. You know, I was reflecting on, on me when, when I get in those places. How do I respond? So I want to put the question back out to you. How do you respond when you bump up against conflict, when you are in a maybe a little bit of a... Um, like one Difficult of those seasons. moments, yeah. you know, even a moment, a, a situation, you know, what's your natural response? Um, and for me, I would have to say, um, I kind of turn into a lawyer and I want to defend myself and I want to get my point across and I want to make sure he understands why I'm right, You're right? right? I'm always right, but I'm really not always right is the point. So I think we all have that. Um, but the good news is we don't have to stay there. We can grow if we're honest and maybe we identify the patterns of how we respond. Then we can apply God's word to it. We can ask the Holy Spirit to help us and we can, and we can improve, we can grow. So I jotted a few things down um, for us to think about um, and maybe you'll find yourself in one of these scenarios with the scenario being how you would typically typically respond in conflict. So if you're like me and you're quick to defend yourself, it might be good to learn to listen and understand the other person's point of view. If you're somebody who just shuts down, you're going to need to learn to be vulnerable, you know, to be vulnerable and to learn to express yourself. If you don't say anything, then nothing's going to change. You know, you got to be able to move through the situation. If you're one to explode, you know, and just blah, you know, the moment anything goes against you, you're going to have to learn to just take a deep breath, cool down. count to 10, and learn to think yep. before you speak. That's good. Because you can get forgiveness for what you say, but, but you said it, you know, and, and our words can be damaging and our words can be hurtful. So I've, I know for me, I've never regretted not saying something, but I have regretted saying something in the heat of the moment. So just think before you speak. If you're somebody... What's that old rule, count to 10? Count to 10, yeah, yep. take a deep breath, yep. count to 10. Sometimes say... Okay, I just need a minute. You know, you can say it nicely. You might need to walk out of the room and come back in a new frame of mind. But whatever it takes for you, learn to, to think before you speak. If you're somebody who is quick to blame, you know, learn to take responsibility for your own actions because um, none of us are perfect. So even maybe in that moment or that situation, you might be 100% in the right, right? Maybe, probably not, but maybe you think you are. Um, but you know what? Another situation is going to come around where maybe you're the one at fault or you're the one who needs to say I'm sorry or whatever it is. So if we learn to give our spouse grace, you know, you give get grace, you receive yep, grace, and sure. we all need that grace at some point in time. You know, um, if you make crazy faces, if you have bad body language, if you huff and you puff and you, 
you know, just are exasperated, you know, um, that's not really a good uh, communication skill or a great way to learn, uh, deal with conflict. So learn to control your expressions. You know, you can do it. If you're somebody who holds a grudge, please learn to forgive. You know, don't bring up, you know, Oh, you know, back in whatever, whatever, remember that happened and then that caused this and mm. learn to forgive and turn, a, turn the page and, you know, um, move positively forward. Um, if you're somebody who threatens or screams or throws things and, you know, it happens, if you, if you have those kind of issues where that's how you respond, please, please learn some self-control. It's damaging to your relationship and I know maybe in the heat of the moment it's, it's your your, like I said, those natural responses, but you can grow in that. You don't have to respond that way. You can learn to respond in a healthy way. And the, the reason this is so important is because our responses determine our ability to resolve the conflict. Mm -hmm. If every time I bring something up, you're argumentative. If every time you bring something up to me, I lose mm -hmm. my cool and explode. What happens is we will stop trying to resolve. Yeah. We'll, we'll stop trying to move the, the relationship forward and that We'll just settle and, and things get stuck. So here's the second question. What can I do? What can I do? So we're going to talk now a little bit about some patterns, some healthy patterns that are so important for the future of our marriage. And I just want to encourage everybody, if you feel like you have some unhealthy patterns, you can always press reset yeah. and you can always say, God changed me and change us. And when you open that door and dialogue with each other, in fact, I would say, if you're not sure what your normal response to conflict is, ask your spouse. They will tell you what they feel like your normal response to conflict is. And just by yep. opening that door, you, you'll be open to mm -hmm. setting some new, some new patterns. And so talking a little bit about patterns here, we just wrote down just some tips and we'll go back and forth. I think the first one is to really learn to appreciate your differences. Yep. Um, to appreciate the fact that you're different and that's really what drew you to each other. I mean, we, we have said before, I've said before, you know, before marriage opposites attract, after marriage opposites attack. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but oftentimes yeah. the, thing that, the thing that drew you to your, 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 your wife or your husband can drive you crazy about them later. Yeah. You know, if you appreciate the fact that your husband is stable and consistent and not dramatic, you know, after you've been married for a few years, you know, you might, I need to see, I want to see some emotion. I want to see, you might, you know, get mm -hmm. irritated about those things in his life or, you know, vice versa. But I think, you know, you appreciate, right. learn to appreciate, learn to thank God for those things. I wrote down four differences, our personality. So your personality is different than mine. Your, um, you're more of a thinker, you, you count the cost, you are slower to move. What are you laughing at? It's true, smiling. all those things are true. I'm more quick to, you know, react and let's go and impulsive and so, you know, jump out of the boat. And so, you know, you've helped me stay in the boat. I've helped you get yeah. out of the boat a little bit. So it works, uh, it we works work well. together. Gender obviously is a difference. That's an easy mm -hmm. one. Our upbringing, I think is the third one. And, and so how you were raised how your spouse was raised, the value system and the way the family operated, mm -hmm. totally different. Op oftentimes it's totally different. Yeah. And so uh, that can bring a rub sometimes because you think, well, this is how we, you know, this is how we should do it. And, yeah. and, and your spouse says, no, this is how we should do it. Right. And what's interesting is it really shows itself, I think, when, when you start raising kids. Yeah. Because your parenting philosophies oftentimes are just so different. Mm -hmm and neither one of them is necessarily wrong or right, just different. Right. So that's when you kind of, I think there's, there's a lot of conflict and around and I think that it's season. It's good you know? to remember. So it's two families when you stand at yeah. the altar and become, you're a new family unit. So this new family unit has to navigate how you do things. So it's, right. I bring some strengths from my background, sure. you bring some strengths, and then together we build something. Yeah, great. and I think that, that, that's the fourth one, strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hopefully, Hopefully, I'm strong where you're weak and, 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 and vice versa, but to appreciate the, the different yeah. strengths that we bring to the table together that we are, it's not about like, I want to win, I want to win the argument, I want to win through this mm -hmm. season of conflict, it's about we want to win mm -hmm. so we can move forward together and, 
and be stronger together. Yeah, I think um, something else that we can do proactively to build good patterns into our relationship is to learn to overlook the minor offenses, right? So that's good. Um, they, they will come. Um, this verse in 1 Peter 4, 8, I think is an amazing verse, and it's such a beautiful picture of love. And 1 Peter 4, 8 says this, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. Fill the gap with trust, believe the best, do not expose others' faults and weaknesses. Wow. And That's oh my goodness, verse. if we could just get this one down, this verse. one verse out of the whole Bible, what amazing marriages we could build, you know? And I think it really um, comes back again to me and me being proactive and me making a choice to choose to see the best because you know what you look for is what you'll see so if mm. I'm always looking for the little negative things that drive me crazy my big picture of John is not going to be a pleasant one but if I can look at the things that I love about him and the things that I think he does great yes then I'm going to build a great picture of him, right? And that's the kind of picture I want to have. That's it. A great picture. Um, so we need to learn to praise, praise the things we appreciate, not just always pick out the things that we don't love. And, you know, just a little uh, plug to the women. You know, the Bible does have some pretty specific verses to us as women about not being nagging. And um, Several I'm, verses, I'm many, guilty. Many verses they do. That. Yep. And there's it's no there. verses about a nagging husband. Nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm not going to nag right now about that. I'm just going to say that there is probably a reason yeah. that this was recorded in Scripture. So, women, let's wise up and let's not let's use our words to build our homes, not not tear them down, and, and the, not to the nag. Next, the next tip is a big one. It's forgive, and there's nothing like marriage to practice forgiveness. You come together, two different people. You live together, and you know you're going to. You're going to rub each other the wrong yeah. way. Sparks are going to fly. And so uh, I, I kind of think there's levels. Now, there's not levels to forgiveness, but there's levels to, like you just talked about, minor, yeah. minor offenses. So there's small things, day-to-day -day things that we need to overlook mm -hmm. and, and we need to forgive. If it hurt you, if it rubs you the wrong way, let me just encourage you, forgive. Forgiveness is always your choice and it's always for your benefit. Yeah. When someone hurts you or someone says something or does something that offends you or, or something goes wrong, forgive because it's, it's for your benefit mm -hmm. that you forgive. And then I think you go to like medium level offenses, you know, things that are maybe a little bit of a bigger deal. They hurt, something was said, something happened. And again, the best advice the Bible gives is forgive, forgive, forgive. release that person. Come on, we can't walk around with bitterness and yeah. unforgiveness and resentment in our heart. No matter what anyone did to us, we can choose to walk yeah. in forgiveness and be forgivers. I, I always like to talk about the, the Lord's Prayer. I mean, I, I, it, I'm like a broken record. It's, it's the pattern that I used to pray and every day I pray through the Lord's Prayer. Well, every day I'm praying, Lord, forgive me of my sin yeah. as I forgive those who have sinned against me. And I think Jesus said, use this as a pattern for prayer because on a... Uh, you know, p pretty like often. A daily occurrence. Yeah, you can daily be or every other yeah. day you're working, you're making sure that you're not loaded down or mm -hmm. there's something in your life, um, you know, that you, you, you're offended by something that, you know, somebody has done. And then I think there are the big ones, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's the serious, the serious breakdowns in, in marriage, the, the, the trust when trust has been broken. Mm -hmm. And you know, these, these are serious. These are serious moments mm -hmm. in a marriage. We read this stat a couple of weeks ago, 70% of men and 60% of women have affairs. Yeah. And those are, those are high numbers. Mm -hmm. So, but it's true, we've walked yeah. with people through very difficult situations in their life. And this is to me the maximum breach of trust. Mm -hmm. You violated your your, your, your vows and the commitment that you made to each other. And so there, there's going to be, and there's going to be consequences. Yeah. And, and so I would still say, as serious as that is, the best advice I could give you if you're a man and you're walking through a situation where your wife has, has been unfaithful or vice versa, uh, a wife whose husband has been mm -hmm. unfaithful, I would still say the best advice I could give you is forgive. Forgive that person. Now, forgiving them doesn't mean you approve 
of what they've done. Not in right. any stretch of the imagination. You've just, you're releasing the hurt and you're releasing the pain and you refuse to carry it around and right. carry around unforgiveness. And so I would say you forgive in terms of, a, of, of a, an, an affair or a, a, a breach of trust. You have to forgive, but how you move forward totally depends on the situation. Right. Totally depends on the circumstance. We couldn't sit here and say, here's exactly what you need to do. But here is one piece of advice I would give. If you're in a situation and there has been infidelity, there has been an affair, I would encourage you to get someone else involved. Yeah. Bring someone else in that can help you navigate through this season. And can I just encourage you, you know, make sure it's not mama, right? I mean, like, you know, um, she may be an amazing person, an amazing spiritual person. She's not the person that's going to help guide your marriage through a, a, a breakdown. Yeah, okay. you need, a, and, and, and you need a, someone who's not emotionally charged in the situation because these type situations, they're painful, they're emotional, and they're difficult. And there's a lot to navigate through. So if you can get yeah. somebody that has a neutral perspective, that's your best chance to get some real help to be able to move forward together. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, my suggestion would be connect with one of our pastors. One of our pastors on our staff, have an initial meeting, have an initial appointment mm -hmm. with them, talk to them about what you're walking through. None of our pastors are professional counselors, but they all are spiritual shepherds yeah. that can help guide you and bring you through a season of restoration. And probably what they will do is they will recommend you to a professional counselor mm -hmm. who's also a Christian counselor who can really help you navigate through through that season, but you know, bottom line is we still have to forgive for our own spiritual life. Yeah, to move progress. Forward. Yeah. So um, we're talking about conflict, and I think um, being proactive um, when it comes to the subject of conflict. I think one thing we've got to do um, is have continual and courageous conversations. So that means communicate, communicate, communicate. I think when we really learn to communicate with one another, we can, um, you know, miss some of those conflicts that would come because we're, we're understanding what page both of us are on. Right. We're, we're understanding one another. Um, and I think when we learn to communicate well, we really learn to deepen our connection, right? We really learn one another. Yep. We learn what makes each other tick. We learn how, well, now I know you handle this situation that way, so I'm going to do this so we don't end up there again, those sort of things. And just big picture... Um, thoughts on this. I think when it comes to communication, there could be two kind of two big reasons, both on opposite ends of the spectrum, that we choose not to communicate. So, you know, the first one being um, we feel like the situation is just not important or it's so small, like it's not a big deal. Um, why do I even need to communicate about this? Um, but the reality is, if it's important to John, it should be important to me, right? So I need to learn to be sensitive to the things that are important to him. And this is kind of the, com the continual communication that we want to be on the same page sure. about things. Probably for smaller things, probably for like daily schedules and preferences and those sort of things. We've got to talk to know what each other's thinking so we can avoid those type of conflict situations. But then I think the second reason um, is, you know, uh, more serious or more difficult, however you want to say it. Um, but it's the things we don't communicate because it's something that matters a lot to us. It's not an insignificant thing. It's something that's very important. Um, it could be painful. It could be embarrassing. It's going to be maybe difficult for us to bring up or to talk about. And this is the courageous side of communication. We have to be uh, brave enough, vulnerable, vulnerable enough, sensitive enough, um, yep. you know, intuitive enough to talk about the things that are difficult and, and have a humbleness about us and speak with a sense of humility and, um, you know, with the right spirit, even in the difficult times, you know, and it's easier said than done, but it's important because this level of communication is really, I think, unique to, to the marriage relationship because we need to have, um, you need to know me better than anyone knows yep. me here yep. on earth, you know, not 
of course not my relationship with Jesus, but you know, better than my mom knows me, better than my friends know me. You need to know yeah. my heart and what makes me tick, the good things and the bad things, you know? And so we work through those things together. Um, and so work at it, it's worth it. It's worth, it's worth the embarrassing moment. It's worth the difficult conversations to come out on the other side better. And then I just wanna throw a little thought in here about communicating in front of your children. So for those of you who have children in the home, um, please be careful what you say in front of them, how you speak in front of them, bringing up maybe difficult or sensitive issues in front of them, um, speaking sharply to your spouse in front of them. You know, the big issues need to be handled behind doors, not in front of children, right? Their, their little emotional states can't take it. And I say little, you know, but really, the marriage relationship is unique in the home. And even for adult children, there are things that we should not bring our adult children into, mm -hmm. into our marriage relationship, sure. you know? And especially for those of you who are in a, um, have been divorced and you have an ex-husband um, or wife and it's a tough situation, I know it's easier said than done, but please don't bring your children into the middle of that. Don't make your kid the the spokesperson for go tell daddy this or da 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 da. You know, again, much easier said than done because I know those are tough situations, but you can do it. You can rise up and be the bigger person and hold stuff in that you need to hold in and talk to the right person about, but don't make your child, your child is not your counselor, yep. your child is not your soundboard, your child, even in a marriage relationship, does not need to feel unsettled by things he hears mom and dad talk about Very at good. home. So. Very good. Uh, last question, this is the last kind of section, and just to bring up some things that we have learned, some things that we've studied and found to be true is what works the best, just some thoughts for developing good patterns. And the first one is so simple, but it's true, and it's the timing, mm -hmm. the right time. There's a time for conflict, there's a time to work through something, uh, there's a right time of day, mm -hmm. there's a right time of the week, there's there's just the right time. If it's, if it's the right thing at the wrong time, it's the wrong yeah. thing. And so, you know, I mean, we joke all the time that we don't deal with anything really serious after nine o'clock at night because I'm out, I'm done by then, you know? And so your mind is, you know, mm -hmm. you're a late night person, so your mind, you, want, you want to deal with it and, and I'm finished, you know? Even 8.30 actually is- Glazed yeah, yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's a real simple thing, but we know each other's patterns, we know each other's flow. It's not a good time to bring it up. It's not a good time during the week. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever the case is, timing, timing is everything. Yeah, I think another thing to remember is the bigger things, um, we need to speak face to face. We don't need to do like a text, like let's get in a text fight. Don't get in a text fight. It's just not <laughs> worth it. it. It's kind of foolish and silly. and lots of opportunity for misunderstanding. Whereas when you're sitting down talking with someone face to face, you can judge their expressions, you can you sure. know, talk it through better and, and focus and make it a priority. Make your spouse feel valuable. You're worth my face to face time. I'm not too busy to talk to you when I feel like we want to talk, you want to talk to me about something. Right. You know, put your phone down, turn the TV off, schedule it if you have to. If it's like, you know, things are crazy right now, we've got this going on and so-and-so's been sick and so-and-so's out of town and whatever it is, you know, man, this is a big deal and I feel like I don't, or, or maybe this isn't a big deal, but I don't want it to become a big deal. So look, next Tuesday, I know you have a day off or whatever, let's sit down and talk about this. Just that kind of communication can really um, avert getting into something that would turn bigger or more difficult. How about positive words? Language is so important and We've got to choose, I think we should choose our words wisely all the time, but you especially mm -hmm. need to do it when there's a rub, when there's conflict, when something, you know, difficult is happening. So in the heat of the moment, watch what you say. The Bible says the tongue has the power of life and death. So I can cut, you know, yeah. with my words, I can bring healing, I can bring restoration, I can bring greater division. I, it, it can be like gas on a fire. I mean, there's, there's, it's my decision, right. it's my choice. And as hard as it may be, be positive, be positive. It makes all the difference mm -hmm. in the world. Try not to exaggerate, try not to use loaded words like never and always, you know, stay positive. Stay positive. Make, make sure you're, you're, you're trying to lift that person up. When I'm positive, she receives it better. Yeah. You know, it's the, it's, the, every, it's the case for everybody. Yeah. 
And then the ultimate goal in all of this um, should be all of us, the healthy response, the healthy proactive response is that we want to work toward resolve. That's always the goal. We don't want to get stuck in a state of conflict, right. but we want to work through it. You know, we want to resolve the issue. In 1 Peter 3.11, it says, turn mm -hmm. from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. So those words, seek and pursue, mm. are action words. So they're going to require some action on our part, something we can do. It's going to take some effort. You know, and really it's not about winning when it comes to conflict. So, you know, you can uh, win the battle but lose the war. So right. we're together in this thing. We're fighting together for our marriage. I'm not fighting against you. I'm supposed to be fighting for you, right. you know. So together we're trying to move this thing forward, you know, um, as a team, as a unified team. And we've just got to, I think if you get that perspective, so, you know, when you lose, then I lose. So I want you to win. I want us to win so we can have a, build a great marriage and have a great life together. You know, and, and these things, um, situations in life, it may not be an easy fix. It may not be, you know, a one-time conversation. You may have to agree to disagree for a bit. Like, okay, we are not seeing eye to eye on this. Let's just take a breather. Let's come back next week and talk about it. You know, whatever it is. But but be willing to do the work, you know, be willing to seek peace, be willing to pursue peace, be willing to, to do what you need to do to find a resolve and, and build a great marriage because um, you can do it. You really can. You know, it's, it's an awesome thing um, to build something great. And nothing great comes without some effort and some work and some sacrifice. And so we're foolish to think we're going to have a great marriage if we're not willing to pray the, pay the price. I think sometimes, too, it's as simple as just give in. Just give in. Instead of holding on, st you know, stubbornly to your mm -hmm. opinion, to your position, why not just, why not just say, hey, look, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want it to be this way. Mm -hmm. And that may be the hardest thing in the world for you because you definitely don't feel like you're, you're, you're wrong. But what if you took that step in order to bridge, you know, bridge yeah. the gap and, and bring some resolve and move the relationship forward? Now, I would say this, it can't be one person that's giving in all the time. That's not right. Yeah. So, but maybe, maybe in this moment right now, you humble yourself, you say, look, I, I don't like the way things have been. Let's, let's figure out yeah. how, we can, how we can move forward. Be, be the bigger mm -hmm. person and I'll, Ditto what you said, you can do it. Yeah. You can have a healthy marriage. It can be strong. It's never going to be perfect. There is going to be conflict. Mm -hmm. Let's not let the conflict get us on the side of the road into a ditch. Okay. Let's keep trying to resolve yeah. and keep trying to move forward so we can grow together and be all that God has called us to be. Come on, do you receive that today? Everybody, can we, can we thank God for the word?